he's been a wonderful son um, who became the man of the house when we lost his dad and um, I don't know what I'd do without him just that I love him that's all couldn't wish for a better son Oh, I love her very much. She's been a wonderful daughter. Um, and I just hope she continues to be happy in her life. That's all. I'm just pleased she retired uh, near me because we weren't together very much when we were growing up. But um, he made up for that retiring practically next door, so that's good. Yeah, he got a good wife in Cecilia, and I, I'm glad she made him happy. And we get on very well together. Erla and I have always got on well together and when she married Lindsay it continued on and um, I'm sorry he's not well now and um, I hope Elaine keeps strong enough to look after him as she's doing now. We grew up like brother and sister, spent nearly every weekend together. We went to school together for a while till we went to the brothers. And um, the same with Madge and John. I wasn't at school with them, but we did everything together on the weekend. And they were always like family too. Siblings, I mean, you know. They are family, but yeah, that's all. Oh, well, my parish family, I've always got on well with everybody and they've always been very good to me. And um, had lovely associations with all our priests and the nuns when we had them. <laughs> And I've been very lucky with doctors, surgeons and GPs and uh, nurses too. And um, get on well with the neighbours too, when they stop moving. <laughs> Whichever one stays in the place for a while. Mm. Oh yeah, that was that was a good move. We were happy coming here, which was because of your granddad's job. But still, we were very lucky. From the time we got here, was people looking after us and making us very welcome. They did. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. I was in a lot of stores. Um, no, all the staff liked him and wherever he went. And um, he used to get imported salmon for Dr. Baker. <laughs> he used to come down. You know the money, the case we used to have at your minor with the money in? Huh? I remember that glow bite case. That was what Dr. Baker used to take down to the woi woi store and your dad would put, fill it up with tins of salmon that he got in specially for him because no one else could afford them. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I was very happy when Father McCarthy made me a sacristan at your minor. He was um, he was a lovely priest. As I said, I got on well with all of them and all the bishops we ever had here. <laughs> um, yeah, with, with your dad, it was about a hundred degrees when we went to Uncle Bill's wedding and I think I had one leg out the door <laughs> of the window because it was so hot. Because we didn't have air conditioning in the mini, much as I loved it. Mm. <laughs> oh, definitely. Don't have, don't ever have guinea pigs as pets or rabbits. <laughs> No, because I'd, I'd favour Dad a bit, I think, so i better not go there. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't here for either of them, because I flew back and, and um, Christine met me and took me straight to the hospital to meet you at Gosford. Christine. At Carnival. Carnival. Yeah. And um, I was with Maria and Dad rang me late at night and said you were born. Then, then she met me when I came home and took me straight to the hospital from Muscot. And I wasn't there up there for Nathan. They just, just Maria rang me too, or well, someone did from the hospital. Mm. Yep, that was it. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful, Medjugorje. Mm. That oh, I've never forgotten that. Great appreciation for taking me there. Just going overseas, it was wonderful going to Rome. You don't remember, do you? Not the sausage. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah, that was good. Well, where we first met was where I worked and he came in, he was a postman at Asheville and he used to come in the shop because uh, he'd finish about two or three o'clock in the afternoon and um, he kept coming over to the office where I was and um, talking. Then he started coming in and bringing a piece of string to measure my ring finger. <laughs> so <laughs> and we hadn't even been out anyway. Then we eventually went out. We had a lovely day in Sydney. He took me to um, a morning show, a lovely lunch at Ballantine's when Chicken in a basket had just become into fashion, so we had that. Then we went to an afternoon show and uh, went to dinner and they took me home. And uh, August, I think it was, later that year, I went to his place for dinner and the engagement ring was on my bread and butter plate. So he took it out and put it on, and then uh, we were married the next June. That was 1955 we come engaged, and married in June, 56. Mm.
and he was the best husband you could ever wish for. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was lovely. Uh, the old caretaker at the school, who only worked there five days a week, he came and opened the church for me at, for a five o'clock wedding in the afternoon. And it had rained all the week and the sun come out as we got to the church. Then we had a lovely breakfast at Asheville Town Hall and then we got a cab at, and went in and stayed at the Carlton Hotel in Sydney and went to Mascot the next morning and Uncle Reg, who had been the MC at the breakfast, was out at the airport to see us off. Where were you going? Cool and Gatter, <laughs> where all newlyweds <laughs> went. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we picked up two other people that had been married on the same day and we spent the whole fortnight together with the six of us. <laughs> six? Yeah, that other couple, you know, and us and them. Brian and Elaine were one, but I can't remember the other two's name. We are closer to Brian and Elaine because they visited us up here when we come home. And, um... We're in the um, Greenmount guest house and the uh, man that owns the manager used to knock on the door to wake us up for mass because we had to come back across the border to Toys Edge to a church. There was none at Greenmount. And uh, we had a lovely fortnight there. And then we come home and I went, we both went back to work for a while, <laughs> or I did anyway, mm. till Paul was born the next March. Yeah. No, that was lovely. He was born in St Margaret's. He was a wonderful doctor, Dr McInerney. And Sister Anne used to walk around visiting everyone, uh, knitting clothes for all the unwed mothers to take their babies home. She'd have a set of clothes for them. And I, that was where I went to Mass in Minority, in the chapel at St Margaret's. And the doctor was there too for Mass. We used to get up and... Oh, and before we were allowed out of bed, they brought the Holy Communion around to every patient. And as they get to the top of your floor, they'd ring a little bell so you'd know he was coming. It was lovely. Mm. That was a beautiful place. Because mm. people from the country that were in there treated it like a hotel because they'd have their babies. And then they'd go and do their business in Sydney, you know, and come back and hop into bed again. It was the weirdest thing. Because now you just have your baby and they pack you up and send you home. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that was Monsignor Cronin at Summer Hill. And Bill was overseas, so Bobby practiced proxied for him as godfather and Elaine was godmother. Mm. He was a lovely priest too. Yeah, Father Marsden. Oh, he died of cancer too. He was lovely. Raymond. Raymond Marsden. Mm. He was lovely. Because then the old priest we had, the parish priest, he was upstairs in the presbytery when we used to have to go for the talks every week or something. And you'd hear him bashing his feet. He was upstairs very sick, so. Yeah, with your dad. We went to... Uh, 
Ramwick race course. On the tram? No. Oh no, we no parish bus. All the priests we had before this silly new church, we'd hire one of these buses. You know, Red bus? Take, no, one of our white ones. Oh, busways. We went everywhere with them, because they were only down the street then, you know, Richters, they were Richters. And then um, Alex Leachman took them over, and still did a good deal for Father. Yeah, we'd have a lot, we had busloads with Three kids in the seats and no belts and, you know, we'd walk around in the bus and we went everywhere in it. No, that was good. And when you go out on a trip, they'd drive you home and drop you at the door. You know, they're in and out all these streets. No, that was good because we were there and um, they parked all our buses in the middle of the so we weren't on the road and uh, there were so many buses there. Mum had gone with St Jalcombs from Lidcombe and she couldn't find her bus when she came out. Because <laughs> they all looked the same, there was hundreds of them. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time because we didn't see her. But oh, And then we went to Mary McKillop too in the bus too. But we had to take, I think we sat in the floor on the ground for that. But they were good days in those buses. Now what can you get in this, 20 or something? Just, just how good the bus drivers were here there. You know, they'd, I'd get take Paul and Maria into school and Dad would go up, the brothers, I'd take Maria up and go to Mass and she'd stay at Woi Woi. And then um, I'd wait outside where the church is now. You had to cross over the road and wait there and the driver doing the town service would pick me up from there because he knew I was coming back out here and he'd bring me home. It was always the same driver, Ronnie Harding. And he'd just stop and pick me up and off we'd go down to the railway station and he'd start his trip. <laughs> Although it's so different because another driver used to pick your dad up down here and take him to Patonga and then go away up to Woiwoi to school after he did the run down there. <laughs> That's how friendly they all were. Now they don't stay there long enough to even find out their names. Just love your family and your neighbours and get on well with everybody.